Jason from Atstone Racing. I'm the crew chief on Todd Hazelwood Supercar. So the first thing we do when we get to a racetrack on a race weekend is obviously the truck will park up. We'll have a window that we're allowed to start unloading. We'll start bringing all the gear out of the truck and then we'll move into the setting up the garage. So we'll, first of all, we'll put the flooring down, put the walls up, start laying out where we're gonna set up the toolboxes, data cabinet, and then placing the car in position where we want it for the weekend. So basically in our truck, we carry all our toolboxes, tire racks, tire tents, Everything we need away from home to be able to go racing. We carry enough spare panels to basically rebuild the car once. So if we have a bad Saturday, we can always put the car together and have another fresh start on Sunday. So in our toolboxes, we're just like most everyday mechanics. We've got our spanners, ratchets, sockets, all that sort of stuff. We don't really have a lot of um, specialty tools. We have a few, but pretty much the same as everyone else. So we use our normal sort of tools for making changes to the car, like your setup changes, spanner checking, making sure everything's all tight and everything's where it should be. We don't really use too much specialty sort of stuff on the, on the car itself. It's more for putting fuel in the car and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, we can take you into the garage and start showing you some of the specialty stuff that we use. So this is our fuel transfer vessel. We use this for putting fuel in and out of the car. So we run it on scales. So everything we use is um, done by kilos. So basically, end of every session, we will drain the fuel sorry, out of the car and um, take, a, take a weight of what's left. We weigh the fuel to give us a more accurate back-to-back -back reading to what we see on the, on the data screens to what the car is using. So when it comes to crunch time in the weekend, we don't run out of fuel, we can push it to the last, the last milliliter. Uh, so this is our water heater. So we use this, it plugs into the engine, pumps hot water through the radiator and through the block to preheat the block so we don't have any nasty failures when we go to warm up. So the reason we heat the, heat the engine up before we start it is that we run a alley heads and the bearing tolerances and piston tolerances of everything when it's cold are too tight, causes damage to the engine. So we, re we preheat everything to around 60 degrees so when it's ready to fire up we don't do any, any damage to the motor. So we also run a heating element on the dry sump tank, so the uh, engine oil that goes into the, pot, into the motor when we start up is nice and warm as well. So here I have is a, what we call a Z adjuster tool, so it changes the ride height. Banger in the top of the shock tower here, give it a turn, and it will either lift the car up and down. Basically an engineer will just come on the radio, give us a call to say he wants to go up or down a turn, or two turns or whatever he wants to do, and we'll just swing away and happy days. So what I have here is a air jack tap. So we plug this bad boy in the window. When I get it in there, turn the handle, that will fill the car with air. And as you poke down underneath here, you'll see the air jack will come out the bottom and push the car up in the air. Yeah, so when you want to bring the back car back down, simple, disconnect the air line, turn the tap, it'll let the air out and the car will drop to the ground. So when we bring the car back to the garage, we put the car up on double stands. So if you have a look here, we've got two sets of stands. First of all, you'll slide this one under the air jack, car will come up. You'll put the little tag in the back, push it up the second lock, and run the second little stands there. That just makes it a bit higher, makes it nice and easy to get in and out from underneath and work on the car. So first is, this is our rattle gun. This is what we use to get the wheels on and off the cars. Everyone will know the sound, very uh, high pitch and air ringing. Use them in the pit stops, everything is, yeah, bad boy, nice and light, nice and central, easy to use. So the biggest reason why we use a rattle gun like this is, as you can see here with the wheel, um, we just run one big central nut. Well, you've got to run it quite tight, so you need a lot of torque and um, a lot of grunt to get them undone. So here's a, just a wheel knocker we use. We just use this in the garage just to knock the wheels up when we need to, just so we're not happening to use rattle guns all the time. So we used to run left and right hand threaded nuts down, down this, each side of the car. Um, there was a big theory of wheel nuts used to come loose under braking and accelerating. Uh, everyone's sort of gone away from it now. We, we all just run just a standard, uh, just a standard nut. The advantage of having the same thread all the way around the car is you can always cross wheels during pit stops. It just takes a, a limit of error away. As you can see on the nut, the nut's captive in the wheel. So the wheel nut stays in the wheel, doesn't come out, and you can just throw it on the car and rail her up.
So first of all, this is our exhaust hose that we run. So when we're running the car up in the garage, it's just a, a tube to try and get those fumes out into the open so we're not all breathing them in. It can be quite uh, toxic for you. Uh, next one, you see we've got a, it's our radiator fan. So during a session, we'll quite often put it in the front of the car just to try and help the heat soak and everything of the engine just to keep it in the prime optimum temperature to, so we get maximum performance. Next we've got our, got our Gojacks. You can't get around pit lane without them. The cars have a, a locked rear diff and very minimal steering lock, so it makes it really hard to get them around the pits. So these bad boys make it a lot easier. So behind me here we have our data station. So we have our lead engineer will sit on one side, um, Matt, our team boss, in the middle, and Sheldon, our data engineer, on the other side. You'll see that they've got a live feed to the to the track, so it's exactly the same as what the home guys are seeing at home. Live timing of what's going on, so we can see sectors and everything, or seeing how we're going compared to everyone else. And then on the other screens, it's just micro sector breakdowns, all the squiggly lines and telemetry of what's, uh, what the car's doing, weather station up, so we can see if there's rain or anything coming through, just so we can be, be proactive and react to what we need to do.